Hey there, my name is Nev, I'm a dev, and today I want to show you how I use Svelkit Superforms in my latest AI app, Svelkit Superforms, if you don't already know that, is a very cool library to work with forms in Svelkit. I would highly recommend you checking it out. And yeah, so let's get right into our cut base right here. Yeah, we're on Svelte 5. Let's just start with how we initialize Superforms. Um, for superforms, we need two things. We, of course, need superforms, the uh, library itself, Svelkit superforms, and we need Zod. And to initialize a form in our Svelkit load function, we're going ahead and creating a form, super validated uh, with our Zod adapter and passing in a schema. In my case, the creating schema is very simple. It's just one uh, field that needs to get validated, which is event. Then we just return this, uh, no, right here, in our uh, returning statement and retrieve the form from our page data right here. Superforms lets us do very cool stuff with, um, yeah, with Svelkit, with Svelkit uh, functionalities, features. Um, first, we have this form store, which if we inspect it, we just have event, which is a little uh, store where we can just pass in our value. So find value needs to be form event and also make sure to make the name uh, or do the name like event. Then we also have delayed uh, where in delayed we can yield a little loading spinner. Uh, delayed basically means if we submit the form, um, delayed is triggered. We progressively enhance our form, which um, gives us the opportunity to make stuff like delayed, um, no page reloads, no page redirect, client validation, and all of this client stuff, which is very cool, like these error messages beneath the form and so on. So, and yeah, I'm going to show this in action, um, buy groceries for tomorrow's breakfast. And we have this little loading spinner because it's taking a bit for the AI. And we have buy groceries for tomorrow's breakfast, five o'clock and it's private. Like we could also do weights training. Let's do that. And the AI will probably be smart enough to give this a fitness tag. Cool. Now we have our, um, now this is like the most basic form you could probably implement. Um, in your actions, you just need to create an action. Cons form is await, super validate request, and then the uh, create schema. Then we just validate our form. And uh, if the form is not valid, we return a fail. If it is valid, we pause in this prompt. We go ahead and insert into our database with things we get from our object. But like all of this is not really related to super forms. Um, I already broke down that one in another uh, video and like, where I just like made a quick overview of the whole app. So yeah, if you're interested in that, I would highly recommend you checking that out. We also have this edit form right here, which is probably much more interesting because it's much more complex. Same principle, we implement it, but with another schema right here, which looks like that. We have an event, we have a date, we have an ID, and we have a tag, which comes from our tag enum which comes from our Postgres enum. So Drizzle is our single source of truth. And yeah, we're returning this as well. But now comes like kind of the magic because we are not only retrieving this uh, down here, actually we're not retrieving this anywhere up here, but we are uh, passing this as a prop in our event. And what is our event? Basically just this component right here. This is our event component. And we have our little interface here um, which shows us how to, which says us which type um, data is going to be. It's going to be a super validated form, which infers the edit schema so that we have schema type safety. In our event, we just have our events table infer. So down here, we have our little props, which we actually destructure. And down here, we have our form. So our form is uh, same things form, enhance, constraints, and delayed. But we do some cool things. Um, oh yeah, I should probably mention these ones. These are so-called events. If we go to the superform docs, we have this little flow right here. First, we have the form submitted. Then we have actually the on submit event, which I have here. Here we have um, 
this is kind of the step before the server is actually processing our thing. So here we are appending a form data uh, of ID is event.id. Need to make it a string because it's JSON and there's no numbers in JSON. So yeah, then we have result, which we have we don't have we don't use that right here we have error which we actually use to just log something and we have success or failure which will be unupdated and basically if this is updated we land right here uh, which is like basically the next step if like the form is valid from the beginning on we're just going through this whole flow uh, straight to update it where we just invalidate everything and down here we need to pass in this uh, ID because every form should have a unique ID which is super important and it gave me headache at first, but then it made sense. Maybe because I'm not such a good developer and I still need to learn some stuff. Um, but yeah, it's super important to um, give yourself and your components like a unique uh, identifier because I had to do this quite a lot. We have event ID, event ID um, to make everything uh, very specific because otherwise this model would be the same for every component. So like it would not matter if I clicked on this pencil or in this pencil, it would just look the same. So very important to mention. Yeah, down here we have the actual form and this date property was a very, uh, was a big headache, um, but I got a workaround, so not too bad, right? Um, maybe we can even make, like that would be pretty unnecessary new date and then do this no now this is gone yeah see the date thing no wait um the two iso string um no this again turns it into a date so yeah not so beautiful to work with dates in javascript our tags right here with our select menu weights training our time these fields are like auto pre-populated um except this one because i don't know how to pre-populate a selection or option field but all of these are already populated which like i said was a pain to set up with um our dates so yeah this like teaches us so many things um or this at least uh, teach me so many things about super forms uh first of all how to have multiple forms in one page uh, because you can just rename this to um edit form edit form no actually this would be the create form uh form and then you can have multiple forms per page yeah, this told me about these events because I didn't knew about these before. Taught me new things about enhancement and componentization of forms. I didn't really knew that was possible before. Maybe it's a bit trivial that it is actually possible, but yeah, now I know it and it's pretty cool. So yeah, I hope you like this video as well. If so, uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel would be a huge help for me. Um, I think I will soon hit the 500 subs, which I'm absolutely thanking uh, you. I am so, yeah, excited once we hit that. And yeah, a little information. I'm super hyped to make videos again, but unfortunately I'm going away for vacation uh, in like the next two weeks uh, when you see this. So no videos for two weeks probably, but I will have plenty of time to think about new videos. And I will probably also do some coding uh while i'm gone so yeah and by the way if i sound a little bit different this is because i have a new microphone because my old microphone it was like a bit old and the usb port just broke so i had to buy a new one and this is how i sound so yeah that's it we'll see us in the next video bye